Hey, here's some things to go over and remember for your AP2 exam or for your OAA related to the heart. These are some things you're going to want to know and get really, really down pat. Your veins and arteries, the flow of blood, systole and diastole, preload, afterload, love dub, and hemostatics. So you're going to want to do some research on all of that and make sure that you have all that really, really good and down. Aside from that, make sure to study your labs and know how to point to different things. So for the aorta, remember A for arch. Always remember that it arches over the pulmonary artery. The aorta pumps oxygenated blood to the body. The pulmonary artery, that blood is shuttled to the lungs from the right ventricle via the pulmonary valve. So I want you to think of this. Before blood gets somewhere, think of that your air blood, you're at an airport. Think of how many checkpoints you have to get. You might have more than one checkpoint, right? So being blood into the heart, you have multiple checkpoints. So before getting somewhere, you need a checkpoint. So the checkpoints are the valves, right? Um, separately, I want you to look at here and take a pause, draw, and note the differences between arteries, veins, and capillaries. Make sure the veins that you are putting this little V thing in there, and you know that it has a v -v -v valve for the vein. Okay. Arteries A away. Know that arteries take blood away from the heart. All right, so as you remember, the arch is super easy. Once you remember the arch for the aorta, you know that it arches over the pulmonary pulmonary uh, artery. And so that helps you understand the position. So when you see these, these pictures, it doesn't matter. I have them on both sides or flipped over. And you can understand B by cuspid or the mitral valve is by the heart. It's on the left side. Big ones are with the B. So just know that when you see these valves, the two big ones, think B by cuspid, find the one on the left side that's by cuspid, mitral valve left side. Or you can use the arch as a guide. The aortic valve is going to be on top of the pulmonary valve. And so you can see that A, B, C, and D. Go ahead and pause the video and see. All right, so a little bit about me. My sister's name is Veronica, and I really, really love her so much. And so I'm going to use it, her in my mnemonic. So run away, try, run, Veronica. So that first part for me is going to help me differentiate the rest, just for me personally. Now I'm going to go pulmonary valve, pulmonary artery, lungs, pulmonary veins, left atrium, left ventricle. Aorta, valve, aorta, body. Because I already have the whole right side. Now I know the flow for the left side. That's just me personally. You might be different. Do what works for you. So right atrium, run away. Try reason why. Try cuspid valve. Right ventricle, run Veronica. So then we have the pulmonary valve. So these different valves are those checkpoints. So you go from the right atrium to the checkpoint of the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle to the check pump of the checkpoint of the pulmonary valve, pulmonary artery, and so forth. So you really want to make sure you get this down, understand the different checkpoints here, understand the different valves and where they go and what is in between them. So what is in between, what valve is in between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery, the pulmonary valve, correct? What valve is in between the left ventricle and the aorta? The aortic valve. What valve separates the right atrium and the right ventricle? The tricuspid valve. What valve separates the uh, left atrium and the left ventricle? The mitral or the bicuspid valve and so forth. Okay. For this one, I want you to pause the video and try and understand on your own the different sections and also trying to understand what chamber plumps blood to the lung, okay? What chamber pumps blood to the lung? So the answer is C for that one. The right ventricle, this pumps blood through the pulmonary valve, to the pulmonary arteries, and thus to the lung. It goes to the pulmonary veins and then to the left atrium, to the mitral valve, then to the left ventricle, goes to aorta, and then to the body. So for each one of these sections, I broke down where the blood is going. So let's say you are a blood, your blood cell, you get picked up and dropped off at point B. Boom. From there, the right atrium, you're going to get blood 
from the pulmonary veins and you're going to send it to the left ventricle. Then it's going to go to the aorta and then to the body. If you are boop, going in A, you're starting at the beginning per se, right? You get the blood pumped into the right ventricle, pumps the lungs to the pulmonary valve, to the pulmonary artery, to the lungs, and so forth. Okay? Can you identify the aorta? So I already know it's already up there, but I want you to look at it and see how it arches again. And this one, they're both red, so you can't really differentiate between colors, the oxygenated versus oxygenated blood. Um, so the superior vena cava and inferior, inferior vena cava is on the left. Superior, think super high. I'm a super, I'm higher than you. Superior vena cava, that's going to be that big stick there. And the inferior vena cava, inferior, less than, lower than, right? So those words, aorta, arch, all these things are going to help us understand where things are. So diastole, diastole, di trying, Veronica. Oh my, Veronica, open heaven. Okay, so di trying, Veronica. Oh my. So diastole, trying is tricuspid. Veronica's valve, O is open. And my is mitral. Veronica's valve, open is open. So the diastole, diastole is the tricuspid valve opens and the mitral valve opens. So if you get this one where it's opening, you understand what's opening, you understand for the next one. Okay, so for the histole, these are now going to close. The tricuspid and mitral valve will close and the pulmonic and aortic valve will open. Okay, so if you remember the last one, it's going to work for you. So try brain ducting for fun, diastole and systole. Now on paper, try and understand that. Try also to understand what is happening. This also has to do with preload and afterload. So during the systolic, don't forget systolic skyrockets as the blood pressure rises as it's moving out of the Diastolic is dying down. It's, di it's driving, dying, diastolic dying down and driving the blood pressure falls during diastolic okay so just don't forget that systolic is the increase diastolic down preload and afterload we were kind of talking about this before preload is the volume of blood in the ventricles at the end of diastole at the end of diastolic pressure afterload is the re resistance the ventricle must overcome to circulate that blood Lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. Which one's easier to remember? For me, it's dub. So if you remember one of them, you can remember both. So dub is the S2. Dub, I think of a drum. Dub, 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 right? And I'm drumming it with two. So S2, drum, right? Now, what am I going to do? If I'm at a club, they have this big drum going. I'm screaming, woo! Right there, I blow my lungs pulmonary and together with that is the aortic so the dub is going to be the closure of the aortic and pulmonary valve and the lub sound is going to be the closure of the mitral and tricuspid valve so it's going to be the, the opposite one the opposite choice there in the exam right don't forget that so let's review some questions in the lab once again this is not all comprehensive you're still gonna have to do your lab you're still gonna have to go look at the ones that you know the the sheets that show point to this point to that but for the most part dealing with the heart they want you to understand the areas of it the anatomy of it so let's look real quick so the right coronary artery rises up from the ascending wall of the aorta there it is i put the little crown there so we can know where it's at it rises up from the ascending wall of the aorta okay so let's pay close attention to this one there was a microscope there. I don't know why my microscope didn't. But picture this detective looking very close with a microscope like this. Not a microscope. Um, what is that? Magnifying glass. <laughs> Sorry. Magnifying glass. You're looking with this magnifying glass and you're looking. Okay, look really close to A and look really close to B. Now follow with your finger B. See where it's going? B is going underneath, but it's arching, arching over. Right, so what is B? B is the aorta. A, A is underneath that top part of the arch, so A is the pulmonary artery. 
So we have to pay close attention. So when you're reading the question, pay close attention, slow down. My next slide kind of got a little jumbled, but basically where is the myocardium the thickest? The myocardium is the thickest in the left ventricle. Why? Because the left ventricle has to do so much work to pump the blood into this big aorta, right? It's shooting that blood, right? Okay. Up. Because look how far down the left ventricle kind of is, right? The aorta got it kind of up and around on that arch, got to push that force, okay? So picture it that way. That's not really how it works, but picture it picture that force kind of going that's why why it's thicker that's why the myocardium is the thickest and that's where it is the thickest is in the left ventricle endothelium again my slides kind of got jumbled here but the concept is still the same endothelium is found where i underlined it for you tunica intima endothelium is found in the tunica intima that's the innermost nearest layer of the artery it's formed by an endothelium. Um, okay, so it's there in the picture. You can take a look at it. You can do some more research if you feel you need to, but the endothelium is found in the tunica intima. Fetal circulation. So what I want you to remember about this fetal circulation is they have their own unique, unique circulation. So basically, they don't need to, they don't need their lungs. They only use their lungs. If you think of a baby, when you pet their butt, boop. They're born, they want to cry. That's why we want to make sure their lungs are clear. We want to make sure they're breathing good. So certain things like their kidneys, their gastrointestinal organs, they do have limited function. They don't require a supply of oxygen and nutrients until birth. But the lungs, they don't really, they, you don't really need them. So instead of blood flowing to the lungs to pick up oxygen and then flowing to the rest of the body, the fetal circulation shunts most of the blood away from the lungs. How does it do it? It uses this dactus venu venu venuous, venuous. So it makes me think of a duck, duck, a venomous duck, you know, or dactus venuous. So I think of veins, this duck is just flowing on the veins with his little ninja and he's slicing the liver because that's what he does. He bypasses the liver. What does he do? Bypasses the liver. So the duck on the veins, he has a ninja knife and he's cutting up this liver. He's bypassing the liver and taking most of the blood away from the lungs because don't really need it. They don't have that exchange happening just yet. So don't forget that ductus venous, it connects the umbilical vein to the fetal inferior vena cava and it's a small vessel. Is it a big vessel? No, it's a small vessel. So instead of blood flowing to the lungs to pick up the oxygen and then flowing to the rest of the body, again, it bypasses the liver using the ductus veinous and it, and it shunts off most of the blood away from the lungs. This next slide is an exercise. What I want you to do is pause the video, read through these, these different definitions for systemic pulmonary, coronary, pulmonary, and portal and put it in your own words. So try and get an understanding. If you don't understand, Google it. Look up look up the information that you need. So I'm just make sure you understand these different um, these different circulatory pathways. One of them is actual fetal circulation, which had its own slide. Thank you so much for watching this video. Here's a bonus question. I'm going to be doing more videos for this AMP 208. And with that being said, here is a bonus question on the next video I'm going to be doing, which is hepatic system, the liver, things like that. Okay, so how does portal, how does the portal vein, how is the portal vein different from the hepatic vein? So the answer is D, the correct portal, that's correct. D is correct. The portal vein enters through the liver. You can look at all these different answers and I put why they are wrong. And that's also what you should be doing. Like when you're answering your labs, don't just answer the one question. Go through, find out why they are wrong and write down on there why they are wrong and why your answer is right. Um, and that is going to help you gain understanding to be able to apply it more. For me personally, what I have been doing that works for me is making some content or some video for myself. And I realized they might be able to help other people too. So I started posting it. But making content that helps me understand to the point where I can communicate and teach it to somebody else. Because if I can teach somebody else, 
I understand it enough. So I'm trying to do my best to teach myself. Um, so this is part of that. And thank you for coming along with me. Some scriptures that I have here for studying. I love, love, love this scripture. It says, but there is a vital force and a spirit of intelligence in man. And the breath of the almighty gives them understanding. So God already gives us understanding, gives us wisdom. It's inside of us. I'm not going to go too into detail. I just wanted to share these. These are some that I personally read. I stand on. Um, I wanted to share them with you. Uh, the next sign I'm going to be sharing some things that you can do. So that should have said go, not be through. <laughs> be through it. Yeah. Go through your course content. Finish your study guide. Review the videos. These videos, I'm going to make a collection of them right before your OA because that's what this is. This is right before your OA. This is like everything you need to make sure you know for sure. Um, talk with your professor if needed, as often as needed. Take notes and review your notes and feel confident in the Lord and pass your test. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and share. Thanks. Bye.